Let's get to the second round. Uh, certainly so many good players will still be on the board. The depth of this class seems to stand out. And back to the Jaguars, Mel, another offensive playmaker comes off the board with the very first pick of the second round. Yeah, give them a good compliment to James Robinson. They stole uh, as an undrafted free agent at Illinois State. You think about Travis Etienne reunited with Trevor Lawrence. Gives them that explosiveness. Todd talked about what Urban Meyer wants is those space guys. And you get him down the field. He's drawing comparisons to Alvin Kamara, who was a third-round pick. Todd really loved him coming out of Tennessee back in the day. And if you look at Travis Etienne, uh, he would be that 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 change of pace, that one-two punch that they need with Robinson to really help that offense. So you get Kadarius Tony, then you get Travis Etienne. And keep in mind, uh, this Jacksonville Jaguar team has another pick coming up at 45 in round two, which is where they can address the defense. So not going to be all about offense, but I think these players are just too good to pass up. And now for me, it's bing, bing, it's the second round, and I can take a run back. Let's <laughs> get with Travis Etienne. You came dangerously <laughs> close to violating your own rule right there, but pick 33 means we're in a round two. Uh, round one, Todd, we had the Bengals. I should say Mel had the Bengals taking Penny Sewell, very obvious selection for them at pick five for a lot of reasons. Uh, they need to address their left tackle position, but the other position that people would consider for them would be wide receiver. So they bypassed Jamar Chase, but in the second round, they get one of the players that I know you love in Tutu Atwell. I do. I He's he's rare in terms of his combination of quickness and speed. You don't see many guys. And I know he's only, what, 170 pounds. Yeah. He's only 5'9". So yeah. yeah. 170, you're being very generous, Todd. I, 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 you know, I like to take care of these guys, Mel. <laughs> but but you watch this tape, man. Like, the way he gets off the line, the way he just separates from defensive backs, he's so unique. He really is so unique. So I, I just think he's special. And if, and if you are going to go offensive tackle, which I wouldn't go in the first round, I, I would push that back and go with Jamar Chase, or I would, I would go with a tight end Kyle Pitts from Florida. But if you wind up going Panay Sewell in the first round, you need to bring in a playmaker. You need someone who can be that guy for Joe Burrow. And, and I, I think that's exactly who, who Tutu Atwell can wind up being. And the Bengals have the makings of a really fun offense if they can protect Joe Burrow because they already kind of go three deep at wide receiver if you include Auden Tate, but Tutu Adwell will bring a dynamic of speed that could really help that offense. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, Mel, you mentioned in the first round how you traded back from pick seven for the Lions to pick 15. You addressed defense. Make it up his own, his own rules again. Hey, he's he's, bar he's bargaining with himself. It's great. You can orchestrate yep. a trade. And that was the easiest trade negotiated in NFL draft history. But at pick 41, <laughs> Mel, the Lions are back on the board. And right now, their receiver depth chart is the thinnest that I can think of for any NFL team in a long, long time. It really is. And I think they can benefit from the great depth at wide receiver and probably bring in three before this draft's over and sign a couple as undrafted free agents. It means five. I would have five young receivers coming into my training camp via this draft and, as I say, free agency. Uh, De'Ami Brown from North Carolina, the heck of a player. He averaged over 20 yards to catch the last two years. He's got the size, the length. He's the overlooked guy. When we talk about Rashad Bateman and Terrace Marshall, you forget how good he is. Why can't he be in the late first round discussion? I think he will be. He will be maybe a late first round pick by the time we get to, to next week uh, on Thursday night. I think when you look at De'Ami Brown for the Lions, if he's there, yes, you can get a first round caliber player at pick number 41. Just so much depth in this wide receiver group this year. The good players are going to be available nearly yeah, halfway the way, through the four, second four, round. Three field. I mean, the guy, I think uh, you know, De'Ami yeah. Brown can run. Now, that 20 plus yards per catch was validated by his speed at over six foot. So uh, he's got size, he's got length, he's got speed, and he's got two years of producing over a 20 yard average per catch. So at pick 44, Todd, I think just looking at this exercise so far, I can't think of a better value I've seen on the board anywhere than you landing Christian Barmore out of Alabama for the Cowboys at 44. Do you think this slide is reflective of how the draft might go? Or do you think this is just one of those where, you know, sort of dumb luck got in his way? I, I think I just, I fleeced Kuiper here is what happened, <laughs> you know? I like how no, he seriously. he's picking for all these teams, Field. He's saying he fleeced me. What about, you were picking for every other team. The reason why he dropped is, a, it was neat, this is need-based, 
And Christian Barmore, if you looked at where he could have gone, I was a little surprised. McShea, McShea screwed hey, this whole Hey, Kuiper, I was asking the question. Why are I, you hey, answering? I'm answering for you. Hey, you screwed it. Before you answer, you screwed this whole Barmore thing up by taking a pick of 32 <laughs> for Tampa of Jalen Mayfield instead of taking Christian Barmore where he should have been picked. I, w- I wish my camera didn't turn on, to be honest with you. <laughs> Enough's enough. No, seriously. Barmore is is the only defensive tackle in this class that could go in the first round, in my opinion. Yeah. Levi uh, Anzarike is is a really talented player, but he, he didn't have the postseason, the pre-draft process that, that you expected from him. And after that, there's a d- big drop off. And I'm I go through all, all of my uh, my you know, the rankings in terms of every single team and what they need, all the needs. And I'm shocked to see that so few teams need defensive tackle. So Barmore, to me, he winds up falling either late in the first or early in the second. But he, he's the number one defensive tackle in this class. And it's about his quickness and the way he finished the last season. I, I loved watching him in the college football playoff, the semifinal and the final. That's when he kind of really turned it on. And I think he's going to be, be a special player in the NFL but he's just still like starting to get the, to really get what he has to be physically. And he's just coming into his own, but I think he's going to be a better NFL player than he was college player. Yeah. He really finished strong. As you mentioned at Alabama, just had a remarkable final game during his uh, final college season final college game, I should say at Alabama winning a defensive MVP in the national championship. So we'll see whether he even makes it out of the first round, uh, but it sounds like he probably will not. Uh, if we were just doing a draft based purely off of player aesthetics, Joe Tryon from Washington, Todd, may be like a top five pick. The guy looks like he was built to play football. He is huge, uh, but he also is a player that's, you know, I don't know that he put it together totally at the college level, like some expected he would, but he certainly brings some potential edge rush to the edge rushing prowess to the Detroit Lions. Yeah, and I, I just love how physical and strong he is. And if you really study like most of the defensive ends, the edge rushers in the NFL that are successful, they have the element of quickness and power. You've mm-hmm. got to have both. And I, I've talked to Teddy Bruschi a lot about this. You've got to be able to scare the offensive tackle with both so that they're afraid that you're going to win with quickness or you're, you're afraid that they're going to win with power. And he can do both. And that's why I, I just think he's going to be a really good pro. And I think he's one of the most underrated players in this entire draft. The guy who I believe he's from Texas, I believe, he landed at Washington, which was yeah. one of his favorite schools growing up. You don't see too many guys make it out of the state of Texas in recruiting, uh, much less all the way to the University of Washington. But a guy who should hear his name called relatively early during the draft process. Now let's get back to one of the conversations that I know we've had in several different places already, Mel. But Davis Mills is going to go somewhere earlier than a guy with 11 starts normally goes amongst quarterbacks. You have him going 51 to the Washington football team. They signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. Is the idea here for you that Davis Mills becomes the Washington starter by 2022? It is. And I think this is a great opportunity for Davis Mills. The 11 starts don't bother you in round two. It would bother you in the first round. Well, we're, mm-hmm. we're at pick here. Uh, where are we at with Washington? Pick 51. 51. Yeah. So for Davis Mills, you figure another year, say he would have played another year at Stanford, where would we have been talking about Davis Mills? A lot higher than this. And some still think he could go maybe late first round. I don't right now, but he could. I mean, Tampa Bay is a spot and teams jumping back into the late first. But I think for them, uh, with the ability to come in, learn from Ryan Fitzpatrick for a year, he's a smart kid uh, coming out of Stanford. Uh, the year he had, and when you watched him this year, he didn't have a lot of games. Remember, he had missed the one game of COVID protocol. Only played in five. He only has 11 career starts, but he did throw the ball accurately to all levels. He did, I thought, make good decisions for the most part. And when he didn't, he didn't let it bother him. He's like the shortstop. If he made an error, he didn't have three or four errors. And if he did have a couple errors, it didn't bother him when it got late in the game. He would still throw that touchdown pass late or that drive late to win it. So he didn't let mistakes bother him. He didn't make a ton of them. But when he did, it didn't get into his mind. And I think that's for Davis Mills will bode well in the NFL. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.